Clearly, functions are powerful tools for building non-trivial, interesting applications in PHP. Functions give us the ability to reuse our code and to even share it with other developers. But rather than copy and paste the code into the different web pages that we want to use the function, we need a way that's more robust and maintainable that allows us to include that function code everywhere we might need it in an application. PHP provides four mechanisms for us to include code that exists in another file. The idea is that we create our function or functions in a file. Then when we want to use those functions in another part of the application, rather than copy and paste the function code, we just include the file where those functions are defined and PHP does the work of including that code in the application where we need it. One of the mechanisms for doing that is the new keyword include. We say include and give it a file name in quotes. PHP does an automatic copy and paste. It takes the contents of that file that's named in the include statement and puts it into our application. Now we may need the file only once within a web page rather than risk copying and pasting the code from our function file in multiple places on the same web page. We could use include once, which is identical to include with the exception that PHP, in the case of include once, PHP ensures that the file has not already been included somewhere else within the scope of the code block. The require command is exactly like the include command, except that if the file doesn't exist, require will throw a fatal error and terminate the application. Require once, again, exactly like require, except that PHP keeps track of whether or not the file has already been included. And require and require once, both will throw a fatal error and terminate the application if the file is not where specified, or if the file does not exist as defined in the require and require once statements. So let's go look at some code. We've taken our function from the last demonstration, the get spaceship function, and we've put it in a separate file that we call the file spaceshipfunction.php. The function does what it was doing in the last demonstration. It looks up, based on the argument passed to it, it looks up a value in an associative array and returns that to the user. So let's go see how we use this in our web page. In our PHP code, we say include and the name of the file. In this case, include spaceshipfunction.php. When the PHP preprocessor encounters this line of code, include spaceshipfunction.php, it does a simple copy and paste. It takes all of the code within spaceship function PHP file and pastes it in this file at the place where the include was encountered. So let's run this. We get the answer that we expected from the function. What happens if we include a file more than once? Well, PHP won't like it, and we'll get an error that looks like this. And it's a fatal error that will terminate the execution of the application. So it is much safer to use the include once command because PHP will keep track of what files have been included and prevent the multiple inclusion of files. So we see now in this case, we've called the function, we've gotten the response we expected, and even though we have two attempts to, in fact, three attempts, to include this file, to copy the contents of this file into our code, it only happened once. Now, what happens if we don't have a file and we try to include a file that doesn't exist? 
Well, that's a nasty error too. But with the include statement, all we get is a warning. We get a warning that says, hey, the PHP processor can't find this file. But it's just a warning, as opposed to the require statement that generates a fatal error and terminates the application. Now, the implications of this are if you have critical code that enforces security or does some kind of authentication or validation of user input and you use the include and that file is not there, then the include statement will not terminate the application, will not throw a fatal error. And that may open your application to serious security issues, whereas the require will throw a fatal error and terminate the application. Now, this is very useful for functions, having the include and the require statements that allow us to essentially automatically copy and paste code. But there's another reason to use the include and require statements. So imagine that we have a piece of HTML code that we want to be able to use on every page of our website. So I create an external HTML file, and within that, put whatever HTML statements that I want to include on every page of my website. Then within the pages on my website, I just include that external HTML.php file. And that HTML, in this case, the level one header, will be printed on every web page where this code snippet is included. So let's see what this looks like. Let me reload the page, and there we go. So now Acme Widget just got bought out, and the new company says, hey, we need to update the name, and we need to do that right away on all of the pages on the website. So rather than going to visit all of those pages, we go to one place and say, welcome to the former Acme Widget Company. And I can go back here, and with a single change in a single file, I could have affected every page on the website. This is the true power of the ability to include external PHP content into our files.